Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, if you were just watching my Skype, I'm sorry. I, uh, <laughs> I thought that pause button was working, but maybe not. Uh, my name is Katrina Kibben, and today you're here to talk about free or almost free ways you can use marketing to fix your recruiting woes. Um, like I said, my name is Katrina Kibben. I'm your moderator and speaker today. Now, before we get started, I want to give you a few little housekeeping elements of GoToWebinar. Now, I'm confident that most of you have attended a webinar before. You've probably heard me give this exact speech before, and I'm sorry. For those of you who are joining webinar for the first time, uh, I hope you'll listen up because there are two things that you should definitely know. The first thing is about audio. So currently, you're signed in with your mic and speakers by default. If my sound starts to get choppy, that might be because your internet connection isn't quite keeping up. You'll be able to hear more clearly if you click Use Telephone, and that'll display all the dial-in information you need. Uh, the next thing you need to know is how to ask a question. I want you to ask questions. I know this is very much a one-to-many style of presentation, but that doesn't mean that you can't participate. In fact, this is the, the safest place for you to participate. So all you'll need to do for that is look for the questions pane on your GoToWebinar control panel. Just type your question in, I'll be able to see it. Hey, if you want to test it out now, you can totally do that, uh, and I'll be able to see. Uh, you can say hi. I know I know a few people on uh, the webinar today, so shoot me a hello. Make sure it's working. Um, I love hearing from all of you. And if your question is, are you recording? And will I get a copy of the slides? The answer is you will absolutely get a copy of the slides and this recording today. So let's jump right in. So on the agenda today, the first thing I'm going to do is tell you a little bit about me uh, and Recruiting Daily as my company, Recruiting Daily, is the sponsor today. Next, we're going to jump right into the topics. So we're going to cover SEO, how you build advocates for your jobs, some advertising on social media, and then we'll talk about measurement of job postings. So really breaking down the most important metrics from a marketing perspective to indicate if your job posting is performing well. Then we'll jump into Q&A and we'll answer any of those questions you have along the way. Do not hesitate to post. All right, so as I said briefly before, my name is Katrina Kibben. I am the Director of Marketing and Managing Editor here at Recruiting Daily. Uh, if you haven't heard of Recruiting Daily before, we are your source for news, technology, and trends in recruiting. You guessed it. If you haven't read our stuff, or you, you might not know that we provide all of that with a serious dose of snark. Uh, and today's presentation may include some snark. You've been warned. Uh, and since we're both the host and the sponsor, I get to do a little plug today of two of our are other sites that I really think you should know about. The first is RecruitingTools.com. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. It is, in fact, about recruiting tools. Uh, we just hired a new managing editor. His name is Joel Cheeseman. Uh, Joel is really smart. He has a long history in HR tech, so you'll definitely want to subscribe to Recruiting Tools and start getting that information. The other is Recruiting Blogs. Now, recruiting blogs is really unique to our industry because it's a completely crowdsourced blog. That means we live and die based on your submissions. So if you're interested in starting to write about your recruiting experiences, that's a really great place to start versus starting your own blog. Uh, for me, it's really a peek into how this whole recruiting thing works. And it was the place that I went to see what kinds of questions people are asking so that I could find the marketing solution that addresses that recruiting challenge. Now, my ask of you today is to please tweet. I want to know what you think. This is actually the first time I'm presenting this content, so I'm really interested in knowing you know, what works for you, what doesn't, um, and really any of your thoughts. So you can find me on Twitter, at Katrina Kibben. You'll see this in the bottom border throughout the entire presentation. My company is at Recruiting Blogs. And our hashtag today is hashtag rdaily. Um, they'll, again, they'll all stay in that bottom footer on every slide, so don't rush to write that down. Uh, and just remember, hashtag rdaily. Okay, so if you've attended a webinar 
on this whole marketing is recruiting topic, you know that they pro they usually play out like it's some kind of buzzword bingo. Uh, candidate experience, outsource, social recruiting, right? You've heard it all before. Uh, it's exactly, uh, sorry, just got a message, wanted to make sure everybody could hear us. Um, so you've heard all those buzzwords, but that is not my intent today. Uh, I want to back off of those buzzwords and really focus about real ways that can help you translate marketing into practical recruiting on the cheap that maybe you haven't heard before. Because here's the real bottom line and why it's so important that we start thinking about marketing principles and applying them to the career process. More and more candidates expect a consumer level experience when they go to your website. So that means it needs to be just as easy to apply to a job as it is for them to impulse purchase on Amazon. And you know how easy it is to impulse purchase on Amazon. I'm sure we all have a bill or two that prove it. Um, and if candidates don't get that level of experience, they're going to leave. In fact, right now, 50% of candidates leave your website before they ever apply to the job. So that means if a candidate actually makes it to the apply, they're beating the odds. And frankly, we need the odds for us, not against us. Okay, so if you have paper and pencil next to you or you're ready to start tweeting, now is the time. So let's get started with SEO. So SEO is short for search engine optimization. And if you're not up on the lingo, it just means that it's the magic behind what people see first when they search Google or a job board. It's the algorithm that makes all of your Boolean strings work. Now, SEO is the bread and butter of marketing teams because we know that without showing up in search results, basically our company doesn't exist. It's really that simple. You will not magically be found by the right customer just because you exist and you will not be found by the right candidate because you're one in a million jobs they might find when they search. Okay, so actually you're not one in a million. You're one in 250,000, and that's how many jobs are posted online each month on average. So how do you stand out to candidates or get found in a sea of 250,000 plus jobs? So the answer isn't quite so simple. You know, I think of it as the world's hardest game of Where's Waldo ever because everything looks the same, and by sheer numbers, that's a lot of jobs. Plus, your job description doesn't really come with that red shirt or the fancy red hat, right? Now, I want to put this into context because I feel like 250,000 doesn't seem like that big of a number when you talk about it in the context of jobs, but it is. So here's a picture of the March on Washington. It had 250,000 attendees. And if I told you you had to find one person in this picture, you'd probably tell me I was crazy. Now. I've shown this slide before in a different context, and I always get the Forrest Gump line. Uh, let's all remember we're not in Hollywood. We're in a far less glamorous place, and if we're not being found, we're not getting our job done. Or what I think is even worse, we're working a lot harder to get the job done in the first place. So how do we find Waldo in the sea of job postings? That's where SEO is going to come in. SEO for job pages is actually pretty simple because we're working on highly structured data. What I mean by highly structured data is it means that everything is kind of plug and play. You're not just writing a blank page. You don't have to learn meta tags and keyword optimization because in most cases your ATS has already formatted the job. So Google knows what's important and what needs to be exported if they go out through job postings. That's pretty simply why it's so easy to scrape your job postings in the first place. But there are four elements that are actually part of SEO that can help drive more traffic to your job page. There's a ton more SEO to learn, but these are the four you really should know. So first, job title. Job title is the most important part of SEO. Whatever anyone tells you, that's the single most important thing you can do for a job posting. And a good job title is not creative. It's really straightforward. So that means no ninjas, no gurus, uh, fill in the blank of all the creative titling I've seen lately. Uh, because candidates 
aren't going on job boards and searching to be a guru. They don't want to be a ninja. They want to be a marketing director, right? So we need to use the keyword that we think they'll be searching. It seems pretty simple, but if you look at job titles lately, a lot of people are trying to be creative and that's just not the place for it. Now, trying to figure out what keywords go into the job title shouldn't always be a gut check. So instead of guessing on those keywords, there are two tools that I recommend. The first is Google Trends. It's literally google.com slash trends. Indeed also has a similar tool that shows you how job seekers are searching for keywords and what keywords are on the rise. Now, this site will not only show you the trend of a keyword, but it also makes recommendations for keywords that are being searched more often as of late. So, for example, maybe you think that salespeople should be called sales executives, um, but the search results are actually showing sales director. You should probably use the keywords sales director in your job title. Um, the best way to do your to test your SEO is to just do a search. Do not post a job without testing your SEO by doing a search. So all you have to do is log out, go back to the board or even your career site and type in the keyword that you think that job seekers should look at before they see your job. And if you're not on page one, you need to keep tweaking the job ad and layering in more keywords. Layering in more keywords is a concept I call findability and something that I want everyone to know. Findability is not my idea. I wish it was, but I can't steal it. Uh, it's an idea from frugalrecruiter.com and basically what he figured out in short is that he wasn't taking advantage of layering in keywords because when it comes to SEO, more keywords is better. So what he did was he kept layering them in to see if he could improve the candidate's ability to find his job posting. Um, and I apologize that this slide is blurry, but let me just read through it and give you an idea of what this layering really meant for search visibility, i.e. how many people saw his post. So he posted a job with just the word programmer in it, and it, got, it came up 19,000 times. He kept adding just one keyword at a time, software engineer, developer, and he sees that number going up because keywords like developer and software engineer are more common than programmer. So then he started matching these words. So including programmer or developer, developer or software engineer. And then when he included all three, he was able to target 222,000 views, right? So he's really making the most of just swapping up your keyword. You don't have to call them the account executive or developer every single time. You can mix up the title to drive more traffic to your site using SEO. Now, getting SEO right and those resources that we just covered will cost you a whopping zero dollars and deliver big results as far as traffic to your pages. Now, I know that that was a very high level uh, coverage of SEO and there's plenty more to learn. So if you're looking for more information about SEO, I encourage you to check out the site SEO Moz. That's S-E-O-M-O-Z. Now, you can subscribe to their newsletter and I'll be the first to admit it's a little advanced, but it will teach you about future trends and best practices all in one place. I think they even offer uh, trainings to help walk through how you do SEO for a specific page, and that can really help with the architecture of your career site. All right, moving on. We spend a lot of time talking about how to measure success, but really the most, empower the most powerful thing we have is not in the raw number. It's the people who tell other people about us. People, those people who religiously like and share everything we share. In marketing, we call these people advocates, in recruiting, you typically hear them called talent communities. Um, I don't really love that phrase, but whatever you want to call them, they are a really awesome thing to have. Now, I know that the word advocates can be a scary word. It means that you're not just blasting job postings on social media, but that means you're actually in charge of using social to build relationships, to make friends. 
to make people want to champion your job. Now, if the idea of having that relationship doesn't excite you, let's talk about the potential here. We know 86% of job seekers have social profiles, and the other 14% you probably don't even want to hire. Okay, I'm kidding. Kind of. Um, but let's face the bottom line number. 86% is a huge market segment. It's larger than a job board, that's for sure. But let's take one step back. From those 86% of candidates who live on social media, let's assume that out of your candidate pool, 86% of them have job postings. But how many actually apply from a social share? Yeah, that's really the most important question. And I have a sneaking suspicion that most people don't know the answer to that question, or else I'd see a lot less jobs being tweeted into the ether. Now, I don't, I, I said I wasn't going to play buzzword bingo, so we're not going to go into the social recruiting tactics rat hole. Uh, that is what it is. But to me, it's not so much about what you do, but your frame of reference for what you're doing. Let me explain. Now, have you ever been to a cocktail party and when people find out you're a recruiter, their eyes get really big and they get really excited to talk to you because they think you're their golden ticket? Like, just because you work in recruiting and HR, obviously you just know everything about finding jobs. The same goes for social media. Candidates follow you because they want help, not because they want jobs forced down their throat. They want to be treated like they're special, and instead we schedule tweets and automate Twitter feeds and never actually respond, right? We don't interact, we don't try to help people find a job, we just wait for a question to come in to provide a response. And that's not how we would communicate with someone in real life. Like, I mean, how do you think a person at a cocktail party would respond if we started calling them high first name, right? Like those really bad marketing emails you get when they don't customize? Exactly. So they're not going to respond to that, and they're not going to respond to you just blasting things into nowhere. So I posted my bio here because I think it's – so. Let me tell you a story. Um, I mention in all of these bios that I'm a Steelers fan. Please don't hate on my team, just listen. Um, so I was watching a football game and I'm tweeting as the game's going on and a recruiter reached out to me in the middle of the game. Now, he starts tweeting about football and I'm like, oh yeah, I honestly, it didn't even register to me that he was a recruiter, just that he was someone who wanted to talk about football with me. So he's asking me a few questions about the game, how long I've been a fan, and then he says, wouldn't it be awesome to live near the stadium? Our office is just down the street, and I have a director of marketing role open. So at this point, he's built a relationship with me in a matter of minutes, and he put his job on my radar, right? That's how it's done, and that's an example of building a relationship and how we should act on social. Now, that expectation versus reality, right? So I expect that he'll build a relationship with me and not just say, you should apply to my job, just like I would in a personal in interview where we're talking about the job. I don't want him to just like push details at me. I want him to actually push, push custom details to me that actually address my needs and my questions. And and this really isn't the only place that I think there's an expectation versus reality breakdown for recruiters. There's also an expectation versus reality breakdown when we think about where you find candidates. So I don't have the poll set up, but I want you to just answer to yourself, what social media channels are you using for recruiting? So I'm sure a lot of you are using LinkedIn, a few less are using Facebook, and as we go down these numbers, the numbers probably diminish a little bit, right? So here's a, a stat that you probably don't know. While 83% of job seekers are flocking to Facebook, all of you are sitting on LinkedIn, waiting for job seekers to come to LinkedIn and respond to your messages. So if we're thinking from a marketing perspective, we need to go where they are, where we can share a message that they want. So if everyone's on Facebook 
and you need more advocates, how do we do that without a budget and without being a pain in the ass? This is my advocate hack, and it's creating a Facebook group. Now, I caveat this advice with the fact that I don't think this is the right strategy for every audience, um, but it's worked really well for my team in acquiring sourcing professionals. I know it works really well with uh, marketing, with media roles, people who are inherently social. Uh, so what you're gonna do is create a group on Facebook and it will be a private group. Make sure that it's closed because that's part of the appeal. And what this is, is it's a way for you to provide a personalized approach where you can have conversations and really develop your advocates instead of trying to use email automation to start a conversation. Because automation does not make people want to talk back. So here's how I get started. The first thing is in the title of the group, make sure you call it a secret group. People love that idea of exclusivity. Okay. And then you want to invite a few people that you know are rock stars, people that work in your company already, people outside of your company that you have good relationships with, that have important voices in your community. And then I want you to tell each of them this is invite only. You invited them because they're the best and they should invite other people. Tell them they have three invites, right? Something that makes it seem limited and ask them to post. Your job in this context is not to provide all the answers and not to post all the content because then we've gone back to a very traditional marketing channel and people know how to ignore those pretty well. You want to make this a group that's helpful to them. So posting industry specific content, posting trends, things that actually educate your team. This is also a great option for creating a referral program because you can put all of your top referrers in one group and let them talk amongst themselves about ways that they incre can increase referrals. So really this is about your advocates, people who you really like and people who know other people. Now you cannot post jobs every day. I can't emphasize that enough. You should really only be posting jobs like once a month. And it has to have already grown to a point where your job isn't the only thing that's posted that day, i.e. you probably want between 50 and 100 members before you ever post a job. You don't want it to feel like marketing. Just make it something you would want to join and people will invite their friends. It's that simple. In fact, when we started ours, obviously we started at zero. We've had this group around for about six months and we're about to break 3,000 members. So give it a shot. And remember, social media is just an opportunity to connect people with people. Your goal should not be, I want a million fans. It's purely to have the right people share your stuff so you're driving qualified interest. Now, I included this quote from Stacey Zapar because I think it describes your role in social media when you're actually being really effective. If this isn't your methodology, then it might be time to go back to the drawing board and start over. The concept is that, you know, you really want these chairs in a circle, not one person at the head telling everyone else what to do. You need to create personalized conversations and your candidates should feel that from you. And again, creating this Facebook group will cost you a whopping zero dollars. You do not need to buy fans or advertise your secret group. It kind of kills that whole secret thing. This is about creating a referral network of people who love you. You do not need to artificially pump it up. Small is actually better. Okay, so I've seen more postly, postings lately about advertising on social media because I think we all know that sometimes you just don't have time to wait it out and let something grow organically. And I know that and that's why I wanted to provide something that you could just go and do. Because in, from a marketing context, I know that marketing, we can't just stop at, oh, this person's a lead. Like, if I hand a bunch of email addresses off to our sales team, they get mad because an email address is nothing without context, without more information. So my job as a marketer is to work people through a conversation before the handoff. 
if you are a recruiter, that means you need to work people through a conversation before you hand them off to a hiring manager, right? It's our job to make sure that we're providing content that makes people want to have a conversation. And that's why we spend money on advertising, because we need to nurture people. Uh, you know, it's not a one and done process to get someone to buy something, and it's not one and done to get somebody hired, uh, which I'm, I know all of you know. Um, but typically that's how we measure success, right? How many people got hired? And that's just not the whole story. So we all know what a candidate funnel looks like. I've Shout out to Amy Miller, because she always uses this data to help hiring managers understand scope, right? This is how many people we are going to have to contact to find your one person. It's not just a, we called five people and we hired one, right? This is also a really great, great way for you to figure out targeted advertising. Because really when we break it down, hiring is a math problem, right? And advertising helps your unknown brand get the traffic you want. So in this example, if we know that we need 245 qualified people to apply, how do we use our low advertising budget to get the right people to click if we don't have a robust sourcing team? Advertising. Okay, so before I dive into the how-tos, Let's set some ground rules of do's and don'ts. Let's start with don'ts, and these are some of the frequently made mistakes I've seen when it comes to advertising jobs. The first one is targeting everyone. If the word everyone is in your copy, you probably need to go back to the drawing board. People don't wanna feel like everyone was asked, especially when it comes to jobs. They wanna know that they're special. It goes back to that whole expectation versus reality thing, right? Uh, next, generic messaging. If your messaging is generic and you've seen it a hundred times, so I'm talking website copy like team player kind of stuff, it's probably not the right thing. You need to be a little unique to get people's attention because in general we know how to block out the ads. All right, so directing people to all jobs. So if you have an ad running and the hyperlink is to the page with all of your jobs listed, not just one job, I think you're actually casting your net a little too wide. I want you to create ads for each job if this is a strategy you want to use. And the last one is not testing. If you aren't testing your job ads, just like you should be testing your apply process, you're putting yourself at risk to end up on some website about job fails. Uh, so make sure you test and test again. So I say this not only in the functional way, but in the learning way too. So you wanna make sure that when you click on your ad, it goes exactly where you would expect it to. And then try to do some A-B testing. You can test copy, you can test links to different pages, you can test different images. Um, and fun fact, A-B testing is actually really easy to set up when you're doing ads on social media. Uh, just make sure you're only testing one thing at a time, i.e. only test uh, copy versus copy and image versus image, not changing the ad entirely and saying, oh, this one performed better than the other one. All right, so with the don'ts, we also have to cover what you should do. So the first one, you should always utilize unique data for targeting. Social sites have a creepy immense amount of data on every single member. And we can actually use that to our advantage. So if you go into the ads manager, which we all have access to via Facebook, you can start typing in little points of interest. So I'm talking about uh, former work history, if you wanna name a company. Um, if you really want people who are fans of Prince, you can type in Prince and I can guarantee you, you'll get a lot of results. So. What you use that data for is to start to investigate commonalities with candidates so that you can hyper-target them accordingly and maybe even incorporate that into your content. Next, you wanna target a minimally viable group. So in plain English, that means less is more. Um, on a lot of social media sites, you can actually target only seven people and usually that's their minimum. Uh, when I'm doing targeted ads, I don't really like to target more than 700 people because I think at that point, I'm targeting a few too many, I'm not gonna get the best bang for my buck. Uh, 
And if you're tar because really, if you're targeting more than 700 people, you're going to spend money on impressions that you don't need because they're spread across a really large group instead of a hyper-focused group that you actually need attention from. Okay, CPC and CPM. These are marketing buzzwords. I'm gonna make you look really smart the next time they're talking about this uh, in your marketing department because you're finally going to understand what that M stands for. Personally, it took me a long time to figure that out. Okay, CPC is cost per click. That means you literally pay on the click. CPM is cost per impression. So that means how many times they see it. I don't know why they use an M to represent impression, but whatever. Now I say, when I said C, I had my air quotes going because really we know people aren't actually seeing it. Our brains know how to block the ads out, like I was saying earlier, but they will see it if it's really hyper-focused, like the example I have for you. So I saw an article a few weeks ago and I thought it was just brilliant. So I actually wrote my own article on it. Uh, if you want to find it, it's on recruitingdaily.com. You can just search hustle, hack, LinkedIn advertising. That'll explain this in even more detail. I'm going to give you the high level of this case study. So there was a startup that really wanted to work in this exclusive workspace and he could not get a hold of the people that he needed to get in contact with to be able to sign up because there was so much demand. And he didn't want to use the same strategy as everyone else, which was sending emails, sending LinkedIn messages. If this sounds familiar, I'm not surprised. Uh, so what he did was he went and bought ads for seven people directly connected to the owner. So that's where that seven minimum number comes in. That's the fewest amount of people that he could target on LinkedIn. And he created custom copy. You can see that in the space. It says, know anyone at AngelPad? Then please help us pass on this message to the team. And for one penny, you can see that in the farthest right column, total spent a penny, he got $120,000 worth of office space. Because those seven people all sent a message to the founder and said, this kid's advertising about you, you should probably reach out, right? Makes sense. If you can get attention, you can get action, and you can do this too. So, for example, if I wanted to translate this into a recruiting context, I may, might say, know anyone at Facebook Mobile? Help us pass on this message. And link to a custom page for people who are applying to mobile jobs at my company, right? So we're taking a specific context, targeting really specific people and hoping that they'll spread the word and become mini advocates for us. So again, if you want to read the whole article, I will share this deck uh, and the link later. If you're just dying to find this article right now, just go to Recruiting Daily, search Hustle, Hack, LinkedIn, Advertising. Now, this is our only advice today that actually costs money. You can deploy ads with this strategy for less than $50 and actually see results. So like I said, his strategy costed a penny, but I think realistically you should expect to spend at or below $50 per job if you want to employ this strategy really effectively. All right, measurement. So everyone gives recruiting teams crap about measurement, but then they go and argue about what to measure, how to measure, we poke holes in logic, and when I say everyone, I mean the social media world, uh, our recruiting blogs community, literally all the conversations I see about recruiting, no one has agreed to one standard of measurement or one set of stats that works for everyone. And it's a bit of a broken cycle, like it's not helping anyone to say your things are broken but I don't have an answer. Uh, but fortunately for us, marketing really has these data metrics down pat. And they figured out measuring funnels and attribution. Now, I'm not going to try to answer all of those measurement questions of what's important in the pipeline uh, because I'm not an expert on pipeline. But what I am an expert on is understanding how a page performs and understanding why it's not performing 
so you can figure out a solution to get more eyes on the page. So I want to approach your job posting as if it was our marketing landing page and figure out how we can establish change points to make it work even better. So the first tool everyone on this call needs to go get is a Bitly account. That's B-I-T dot L-Y. You don't have one, go make one. It's free and it's the easiest way for you to track how effective different pages are. I really like it because you can actually search your links by keyword so it's easy to organize and select your ads and compare them to see how your different tests are performing. And that's all with a free account. Uh, with the free account, they'll also give you all of the information that you see on the screen right now. So they'll tell you the total clicks, um, they'll tell you from the source of those clicks, and then they'll also tell you the location. So for example, if I was posting a job in the UK, but all of my clicks were coming from the US, maybe it's time to take a step back and figure out where I'm promoting and why um, people in the US are finding the link versus people in the UK. It's probably more data than your ATS gives you on links, depending on your system. Um, and it's worthwhile information because again, it's just pointing you in the right direction of changes you can make. Now, one note just for standardization and something that my marketing teams have done, we always make sure to use one link for all promotions so they're all tracked to one place. Makes it a lot easier for you to get this recap data and not be scrambling when it comes to data time. So what I'd recommend for that is to just create an easy to update spreadsheet on a shared drive or Google Drive so people can find their link anytime. Um, and make sure again to emphasize everyone please use this. You can also customize your link up here at the top where it says edit. I can make this bit.ly you know, slash uh, managing director USA, right? You can create them and make them that custom as long as they're unique. So you'll want that info to help you with the specific page analytics. Now, this is about digital experience and it can help you figure out uh, with marketing metrics how the page is performing. Now, let's start with that link you see, the http rdaily.co slash can exp dash. That's candidate experience dash. Um, but what I did was I actually set up a Google Analytics custom dashboard for all of you to use. So if you use Google Analytics, just lift that URL, put it into your uh, browser, and hit enter. You might see a security error. I have no idea why that's there. I promise I'm not trying to hack your metrics. Um, just hit accept and then if you're logged into Google Analytics it will let you choose a website account to apply it to so that means what account do you want to see this dashboard in just select that account and when you hit enter it literally will just show you this dashboard filled in with your data the screenshot you see right here is our candidate experience dashboard for example. So let's go through these metrics and I just want to make sure you know what they all mean in the first place because I realize these are marketing buzzwords that perhaps you don't measure right now but you should. The first one is bounce rate. How many people are quitting and where do they quit? I have seen sites where the careers pages have almost a 100% bounce rate. That means that everyone leaves when they see your page and it might be worthwhile to add more calls to action or make it easier to apply. Traffic by source. This will show you what source drives the most people. And what it should tell you about your jobs page is that you might want to make your experience look a little bit more like the site that's driving the most traffic. For example, if people, if most of your traffic's coming from Facebook, you know, consider making your job ad look a little bit more like a Facebook page um, or a Facebook profile where it says add friend, apply now and add your content that way, right? We can use that experience to inform how our pages should look. Um, 
it's also a great way to see if your paid and free marketing is actually working in scale with the others. Network growth. This will show you what traffic sources are growing the most based on all of your sources and give you indications about where you should be spending money. Average session duration. So that's how long they stay on your site. And this is a good gut check for your apply process. If you know it takes five minutes, the session, session duration, that's a hard word to say five times fast, session duration should be around five minutes. So five minute apply, five minute session. If that number is not lining up, again, it's time to maybe break out your process or make it a little easier for people to apply. Clicks. Now, this is really the same thing you're going to get from Bitly, but this tells you clicks on everything on your site, even things that you don't have Bitly links for. So what I like about clicks is that it shows me what the most uh, interesting information was to candidates, and that might be something that I take from that page and put on a job description so that people have something else to do if they don't want to apply now. So with all these metrics, Basically, what it really boils down to is understanding where you should be spending your time uh, and if there's changes you should make to your career site. All of these numbers are just indicators. They point to potential, so approach them that way. Now, 43% of statistics are completely made up, and so is this one. Now, fortunately for you, none of the other ones in this presentation were. <laughs> The reason I cite this extra exclusive data is because you probably noticed I didn't include any benchmarks on that last slide. I didn't tell you what bounce rate should be or click rate should be, and that's because I don't believe that we should have shoulds when it comes to marketing metrics. We want to make sure that we're measuring success based on your numbers, so always plan and strategize success and growth based on starting at your benchmark and then increasing it reasonably month over month. If you set your goal way too high, you're going to get disappointed, and then you know, you're know you out, right? You're gonna stop measuring because you know these, these numbers make you look bad. And again, because I hooked you up with that dashboard, it's going to cost you a whopping $0. Uh, if you need any help implementing that dashboard, or when you click the button it doesn't actually work, uh, you should know how to find me on Twitter or stalk me on LinkedIn to get some help, as that stalking is part of the recruiting job. Uh, so feel free to reach out. Now, with about eight minutes left in our presentation, we, or I, <laughs> am going to take questions. So if you have questions about anything we covered today, feel free to type that into your question pane, and I'm going to look through these questions and make sure that we can answer all of them. And if we can't answer them now, I'll make sure and follow up via email. All right, so Jessica, thank you so much for joining. Uh, she asked, how do you suggest a health system could use Snapchat to the recruitment advantage? So in that case, I would actually suggest that you do things that show your office culture. Um, really go into the, this is what we're doing, this is how we tell stories. If you want an example, I actually suggest that you follow Jose Watson on Snapchat. I believe his Snapchat name is Jose Watts. He recruits for Lowe's, and I realize that that's not the same industry, but what he does a really great job of is telling stories without disclosing his employees' personal information, and I'm sure that's part of the concern. So make sure that you know, you're looking at how you tell a story. You're not looking for one-off options when it comes to Snapchat. I think that's the biggest piece of advice. All right, so we have another question here um, from Miroslava. Thank you so much for joining. She said, I thought the results that come up at the first page are those companies who pay for keywords. Is it not like that? So most companies do show paid results first, especially the job boards, your Indeed, even Google. First four results might be paid. But based on disclosures that they have to do through you know, the law of the land, the rest of them are optimizations based on Google's al algorithm. So you can actually impact this. 
All you have to do is, um, again, go back to that title, keep testing. Uh, it's really not, it's not all leaning towards the paid is what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, and just remember, if you're not coming up on that first page, just keep tweaking the job. All right, Robert Evans, thank you so much for being here. He said, I'm the digital marketing manager for a recruiting company. How can I show my company's recruiters the value in social recruiting? All right, so the first thing I would say is to show them the scope of candidates that are already on social media so that they can understand the breadth. Then I go in and show them that unique level of data that social media offers. Um, so go into your Facebook ad manager and start typing in keywords and show them just how narrowly targeted you can get the information on social media so that you can get the outcome. Um, make sure that, sorry, I'm seeing questions coming in. It's totally distracting me. <laughs> I'll stop looking. So show them the scope then show them how narrowly they can target, and then show them about successful conversations. So what you need to do is model good behavior on social media where you build a relationship and that person turns into a candidate. Because every recruiter will tell you their database is the most important thing they have. So what you really need to show them is how they can create a highly customized, highly targeted database using social media and they'll start to get it. What scares them is the communication part, and that's phase two, where you actually model the behavior and show them how to do it. All right. Whoop. So that's Robert. OK, so I think that's all of our questions for today. Um, if you need to contact me, Wait for it. <laughs> I am on Twitter at Katrina Kibben. Uh, if you want to find my LinkedIn or my email address, I'm very easy to find as I am the only Katrina Kibben out there. Uh, and if you are waiting on a copy of the slides and the recording, just wait 48 hours and I will make sure that you get both of those right to your inbox that you registered for this webinar with. Thank you so much for being here today. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you'll join another webinar soon. Um, and again, if you need anything, you can find me at Katrina Kibben. Thanks.